how much is enough sleep? Four, five, six hours? Actually, it's seven and a half. Hi, I'm Allie Bierman. I'm really glad you came by today and you can find me at your relationship intelligence.com. So here's the thing. The Center for Disease Control calls sleep problems a national health epidemic. And the National Sleep Foundation actually reports that people with sleep disorders are spending hundreds of billions, that's with a B, hundreds of billions of dollars every year to try to get some peaceful shut eye. So what is going on? You know, used to be the number one health issue was food. What's your diet? What are you eating? More importantly, what are you assimilating and using? Then number two was, are you gaining enough vitamin D? And then sleep came in number three. Not anymore. Today, the rankings for most important factors in your health, number one is sleep. Because it controls your brain and everything that's running your whole body. Number two is vitamin D3, and people aren't getting enough sunshine. And then the last thing that's coming in place after the sleep and after the vitamins is what is your lifestyle diet. So what we're talking about here today is a sleep. You've probably heard of Ariana Huffington. She's co-founder of the Huffington Post. She used to run on four hours sleep until one day she just passed out. Her face hit her desk. She broke her cheekbone, wound up with five stitches in her right eye. And now she's the biggest proponent out there educating the public on sleep and its importance. To see Ariana Huffington's TED Talk, click the link below. So what happens when you're not getting enough sleep? And by the way, it seems, especially with men, they think it's a sign of their virility if they're not getting a lot of sleep. That the busier they are is like a badge of achievement? Seriously? That people brag about how little sleep they're getting and doing well? Well, actually they aren't doing well. You see, when your body's not getting enough sleep, you don't notice that you have a decline in your functioning, in your creativity, in your uh, ability to do problems, in your mood, causing depression, in your alertness do you realize that the lack of sleep decreases the productivity of the country. There's been a decrease, not an increase, because people are getting less and less sleep. Now, here's some things you might not be aware of. Your aging process and your health and how you're going to do in life, it actually starts when you're only two years old. By that time, your body's recognizing, hmm, I have all these functions. Your brain is thinking, how am I going to get all this stuff done? Regulating every the breathing, the digestion, growing. How am I going to accomplish all of this when I'm not getting enough sleep? Because here's the thing. Your brain only detoxes, and it has to do this every day. It only detoxes when you're in that deep sleep. And your brain can only make new healthy cells, can only repair damaged cells, can only detox, get rid of the cells that aren't helping you anymore. Only happens when you're in that deep sleep. So what your body does 
And what your brain tells your body to do is, okay, not getting enough sleep. What we're going to do is start shutting down. We're going to be very subtle about it, but we're going to start shutting down functioning across the body. Let's see which are the organ systems that we can start with so it won't be noticed. Now this is starting when you're two years old. So as you get older, you're still not getting enough sleep. You're having more and more totally out of your awareness, functioning, declining. People are calling it aging. It's a lack of sleep. So, you ever wonder why, maybe you feel tired, maybe you don't. Ever wonder why you get colds more often because your immune system is crashing? You don't ever want to have surgery in the afternoon because the doctor's most alert, most awake in the morning. And as the day goes on, you'll see surgery results are less and less successful. You don't ever want to go into a hospital when the residents are just starting fresh out of medical school because they're not getting enough sleep to be able to think clearly, to be able to exercise good judgment. These are all things that have been backed up by scientific evidence. So, what are some of the things that are causing this crazy decline in sleep? This concept of people who are thinking, oh, I can get by on four hours sleep. And they call it biohacking. And the only thing they're fooling is their minds, because their brains know what's going on. Their bodies know what's going on. Well, all of these devices that are so prominent everywhere, they're blue light. So what's this blue light? It's part of the spectrum that we need during the day. However, at night, that blue light causes your melatonin to decrease to, instead of increasing, which is what allows you to fall asleep and stay asleep. So what's blue light? Blue light is your LED TV, your big screen TV. It's your little smartphone. It's your tablet. It's your computer. All of those things are causing you to have trouble with your sleep pattern. Lights coming in. I couldn't believe this, but I've been reading like all over the place. There are people who actually sleep with their cell phones by their head. Not only is it by their head, it's on. So what's happening is the brains are being fried from the 5G, which is going through your place anyway. Hopefully you know enough never to have your modem or your router in your bedroom and to disconnect it at night when you're going to sleep. Because as I demonstrate when I do live classes of what you don't know, you don't know that's running your brain, your mind, and your health, I demonstrate how an uh, extension cord that's not plugged into anything, just holding it weakens you. It's not on, it's not plugged in, hasn't been for a while. But the electrical charge is still inside it. What do you think is inside your cell phone? Your cell phone shouldn't even be in your bedroom, even turned off. Nothing electric should be in your bedroom because the noise of it, because the light of it, is going to distract the light going into your eyes. So you want to sleep with blackout curtains. You want your bedroom to be dark. It really isn't hard to do. And a sleep mask is just some extra protection for you. So that's something you can do that will allow you to have a deep sleep. Oh, and of course, you want to Stop eating three hours before you go to sleep. You definitely don't want to be exercising within three hours before you go to sleep. And here's the most important piece. Stop all the devices. That includes your TV. Three hours before you go to sleep. Create a routine. If you're a parent, you did it with your child. A bedtime routine for winding down, for calming down, for getting peaceful 
put your devices away in the other room. So here's the very last thing I do in my bedroom routine. And I recommend it highly. I've been doing it many years. And here's what happens. The last thing I do before I turn out my lights is I write a list of 10 things, at least 10 things for which I'm happy and grateful that day. Now, what does that do? It sets my mind up for being in a good, positive, loving place to go through the night and therefore I have good dreams. It sets the energy for me to be in a helpful, helpful state all night long and I recommend that to you. So, what are you going to do today to make a change in your sleep patterns because how you age is up to you. Once again, I'm Allie Bierman. You'll find me over at yourrelationshipintelligence.com. In fact, if you click the link below this video, it will take you to my page on the site that will give you additional tips for how to live your very excellent life in health, in happiness.